Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some more of the marijuana sector stocks that were in play on Friday. Um, as you can see here, the, this is the uh, marijuana index. Um, the the uh, United States index was up 14% or n nearly 15% on Friday. You can see here it had been uh, cruising higher for a couple of days and then had the big parabolic push on Friday. That was a huge move for the United States index. You can see the Canadian index spiked as well on Friday but but uh, you know it hasn't made the same type of move uh, the North American index is it, it's heating up yeah it closed up 10 percent so so what we're looking for now is a is a, a you know a possible uh, you know a continuation of the uptrend as you can see if you drew a trend line across the top here it's hitting the the uh, key resistance level right now it needs to bust through this uh, 250 uh, you know resistance zone above 260 to test that 300 level so so yeah yeah, so we're going to see if this was just a uh, one-week move or, or if uh, th there can become a sustained uh, run after, uh, you know, there was some, uh, you know, positive uh, uh talk from the White House about possibly uh, letting the, the legal marijuana companies run without being uh, you know, uh, messed with by the federal government. And so now we have uh, lots of United States sector stocks that are running, including SRNA. This trades over the counter. It closed up nearly 37% um, on Friday. You can see RSI is at 67. Um, yeah, it made a big move. It closed above the, the 50 and 100 day simple moving averages. If it can stay above this 23 support zone, that's going to signal it wants to to head higher. It's hitting this uh, 28 level, this resistance from over here and uh, in uh, February. If it can break above, that, that 34 level will be on deck. Ultimately, it could possibly run back up there to 47. Now, now the, the, the candle did close well above the upper Bollinger Band. If the candles work back into the bands, you want to see it stay above that 100-day simple moving average. The nice thing here, this was just the first day of the run, or, you know, this is uh, day one. You know, uh, it's not on a multi-day run, so, so that's positive. But it did close well above that upper Bollinger Band, and many times the candles will work back into the bands. And this does look like big resistance from February. So, so keep an eye on it for a break above 30. If it fails to break that level, look for a possible reload off of 23. Okay, take a look at at Kush Bottles. Okay, so this is the uh, a container and packaging company. So this is a way to play the marijuana sector without playing uh, without trading a company that touches marijuana itself. Uh, these guys should be have no problems regardless of what the federal laws are. Um, you know. They they only make the packaging for the marijuana, and, and they just came out with uh, record earnings. I believe they were up 240, 240% over uh, the previous year, and, and I think they did around $12 million in uh, sales this last uh, quarter. So it's really heating up for them. And, and as you can see here, they've got a, a RSI at 57. Fasto is at 100, so it is a little frothy on Fasto because it closed at high of day. But but uh, as you can see, it was uh, you know down two days in a row and it had the big spike today. There was a symmetrical triangle pattern you can see descending resistance and ascending support there, there was a close above the descending resistance line and the 50-day simple moving average at 519 if that that 519 level holds look for a break above this 550 to 575 level if it can break above that six dollars will be on deck the whole thing now is just for it to stay above 519 and turn that 50-day simple moving average into support if that holds it should break out higher notice the nice volume spike it had really good volume um We'll see if it can continue. Take a look at CANN. Okay, this is General Cannabis Corporation. It did close up 25%. You know, th th this is at uh, uh, 71 on our side now. Fasto did close at 100. Th th this one is on a multi day run. Uh, you can see Plus DI breaking out here on ADX. So the green line crossing the red and the black line to the upside. And, and so this is already on a five day run. And, and so it's, uh, you know, did close above the 100 day simple moving average. So that's going to be the key level to hold. If it does drop below, it could fill the gap here. Here between the high of day on Thursday and low of day on Friday, and, and then you know EMA four is at three seventy seven. A drop to that three seventy seven would fill the first gap. The risk is there is another gap below that, all the way down here, uh, just above three dollars. So a drop down to three ten and EMA thirteen would fill that second gap. So so it is really stay bullish. It needs to stay above that hundred day simple moving average at four twenty one. Drop back below and that would be a red flag. Um, you know it's currently uh, hitting. Uh, you know this it did close above this zone as well. So it needs to close above this high. High, high, high close resistance level and, and break above five dollars to head higher. Um, yeah, let's look at CVSI. 
So yeah, CVSI, um, you know, it closed up 20%. You can see, or almost 21%. RSI our size at 64, Fastos at 82. You've got a bullish crossover here on 80X. There was a nice breakout above this uh, sideways channel. Notice it's been, a, you know, this is the top of the channel. This is the bottom of the channel. You know, it came up, it hit that top of the channel again in March and pulled back. And, and then on Friday, it closed above the top of it. So that close above high, close horizontal resistance does signal more upside potential. It needs to stay above that 50 level. Fail to hold that 50 level and pull back in, and then it'll, it'll signal more consolidation, not ready to go. If it stays above 50 and breaks above this 56 level, look for a run up here to this 63, 64 level, the high close from back here in the in, in January. That's going to be the big level to break. Notice it's on a three-day uh, run with a big volume spike. So it's got good volume behind it. We just have to, uh, yeah, see if it can hit that uh, 64 level. Um, yeah, let's look at GRWG. Yeah, this closed up 18%. Now, it did only trade... Uh, 269,000 shares. Our size at 59, so it has room to run. If you look back here, it, it did hit 90 on previous runs on our side, so there is juice in the tank. Check out Fasto, it's above 80. There's a nice uh, crossover on ADX with plus DI crossing minus DI to the upside. And so, yeah, this is breaking, you know, above the, the middle Bollinger Band and the 100 day simple moving average, currently at 441. And so that's the gold line, and it also closed above the green line, which is the 50 day simple moving average at 452. So if it could stay above 450 that would be really bullish it needs to break above the the, the top of the channel which is uh, right here um, you know if it can break above this key resistance zone that it's hitting right now you could see a run back up to six dollars that was this previous channel the top of the previous channel and so uh, going forward it's going to be all about staying above EMAs for, or above the the 150 day simple moving average if it drops back below it could test EMA 4 there at four dollars and the middle Bollinger Band it needs to hold the middle Bollinger Band at 395 to keep the uptrend going Okay, take a look at GBLX. Okay, this closed up 25%. Uh, our, our size at 61. Okay, notice it, it did run well above 90 on that last run. So, uh, yeah, it's got a little juice. Fasto is at 90. Um, you know, it's on a multi-day run, though. Um, so, so you might want to look at this for pullback. Um, it has a crossover here on ADX with plus DI crossing minus DI to the upside. Um, check out the close above the 1500-day the simple moving average like the last chart. It needs to stay above the gold line at 62. If it can stay above 62, the 70 level is going to be a big level to break. Notice that there was consolidation in that level before, so it's going to be a tough one. If it can close above 70, that's going to be signaling more upside potential, and 80 will be the next big level to break, this uh, uh, support level from back here in January. Now, if it drops back below 62, that would be a red flag, and then it would be a red flag if it dropped below the 50-day simple moving average at 57. You know, that would put the middle Bollinger Band at 50 on deck uh, down here. It needs to hold the middle Bollinger Band to keep this uptrend going. Keep in mind, it's already on a four-day run. Okay, take a look at uh, uh, MCOA. This is the Marijuana Company of America. It closed up 15%. RSI is at 60 up here. So, uh, you know, it's got some uh, juice in the tank still. When Fasto is at 66, um, you know, you have a crossover here in ADX with the green line crossing the red and the black line to the upside, plus DI above minus DI in, in ADX. Notice the volume spike down here. You know, good volume. Uh, it had closed above the 50-day simple moving average. So the close above that level for the first time since back here in January, it, it, it is a bullish signal. It needs to stay above that level. It also closed above the middle Bollinger Band. It's trying to get a new uptrend going. It hit the, the next key level, the red line, which is the 200-day simple moving average is 0.031. It needs to close above that level to head higher. If it can, then the 100-day simple moving average at 0.34 and the 300-day simple moving average at 0.35 will be the two levels to break. Now, now it, it did also close above this high close resistance level from back here in March. Notice that was the top of this channel. So that does signal more upside potential, it just has to break that 200-day simple moving average. Okay, let's take a look at AMMJ. This is American Cannabis Company, and it closed up 33% on Friday, so that was a really big move. RSI is now up here at 70, so it is a little frothy, and you have uh, Fasto at 97 with the parabolic move here on ADX, uh, or with Plus DI, you know, spiking. You know, when you get that very vertical spike, you know, usually that signal it's getting a little frothy, and it might have to cool down. Uh, if you look down here, it's, it's on a, a seven day run so yeah so this one this one's a little frothy um you know it's already been on a multi-day run okay, look at it 
for a uh, possible pullback. What, what I'm thinking is maybe I uh, could pull back down here and test this 100 day simple moving average at 98 and EMA 4 down at a dollar. And then that could p provide a potential uh, load opportunity if you miss the run. You know, it's now it's above that 50 day simple moving average and middle Bollinger Band as well at 93. It has to hold those levels to, to, to keep the uptrend going. If it can hold them and, and stay above that 100 day simple moving average, that'd be really bullish. Now, to the upside, let's say it doesn't pull back and it keeps pushing higher. Th then what you're looking for is a break above this. Uh, 130 zone okay so that's this uh, there was a lot of trading here in January and if it get above that 145 will be the next target this high close from January okay so yeah it did close with that volume spike on Friday now let's take a look at a couple more of the foreign stocks. Uh, uh, this this is Spleef, uh, S P L I F, uh, and uh, ticker symbol. And, and so it closed up 19%. Um, 165,000 shares traded. So it's a thinly traded stock. RSI is at 52, so it's got a lot of room to run. Um, yeah, you keep an eye on it. it. It closed above that middle Bollinger Band. You know, it hadn't closed above the middle Bollinger Band since back here uh, before support broke in March. And, and so uh, the chart looks like it's trying to heat up. It did break this descending resistance resistance line so so it you know closed above what well, the big thing's going to be this 50 and 100 day simple moving average if it could break above 37 that's going to be signal that it wants to head higher and then you'd be looking for this uh, 43 level this high close from march now if it fails to break that 37 and it drop below the middle bollinger band at 33 that would signal it's not ready to go okay let's look at mp uh mp XEF. Okay, this is a new one to me, but I thought this was pretty interesting. It closed up 21%. It, it, it traded 2.7 million shares, and and it uh, um, you know at 70 cents a share. So this is good volume for for uh, uh, over the counter marijuana stock. It, it's back above 70 on RSI. Fasto at 91. You know you got plus DI pushing the green line. Um, yeah, this was the first day of the run here. It already been up two days in a row. But but yeah, this broke out of the channel. Notice it had a sideways channel here. This is the bottom of the channel. This is the top of the channel. It broke out of the top channel. It also broke the high close from February here. And, and, and so it's signaling more upside potential. It's hitting the resistance from January. This was a support zone in January. If it can bust above the 70 resistance zone, you're looking at 80 as the next big level to break. And, and then a, possibly a run back up to 90 from that high close in uh, January. So keep an eye on MPX. EF, I thought this was a really nice volume spike. Notice the volume was the best volume since back here in January. And it was down two days in a row, and then it spiked on Friday. So this one could follow through and keep moving. It did close well above that upper Bollinger Band. If it pulls back, you want to see that EMA4 at 63 hold. You don't want to see it drop back in the channel. It needs to stay, you know, stay above now that it broke out. Okay, let's look at LHSIF, all right? Liberty Health Science. Closed up 19%. Um, you know, it has uh, RSI here at 49. If it busts above 50, that would be bullish. Fasto is above 55. You have plus DI crossing ADX, or plus DI crossing minus DI, you know, signaling the bulls are heating up. This is, you know, it had a really nasty downtrend. The middle Bollinger Band over here broke. Okay, this was the last close above the middle Bollinger Band in January. And then all these candles, look at all the tops here. Try to close above the dotted purple line, which is the middle Bollinger Band and also the 20 day simple moving average. But they all all failed and it kept close, you know, dropping lower. You know, it found support at 55, and then today was the first close above the middle Bollinger Band since this candle right here back in January. So that's a, you know, all these candles they didn't let close above. They finally let it close above on Friday. If that level holds at 77, it signals more upside potential. If it drops below, that would be a red flag and signal it's not not ready to go. Look at the 50-day simple moving average at 93. That's the next target. If it can break that, then that 200 and 300-day simple moving average and the one dollar. Uh, uh, resistance zone will be on deck. Notice it has the increasing volume. Uh, we'll see if it can follow through. Uh, it is already on a multi-day run, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's look at TGIFF. This is Friday Night Inc. It closed up 18% here. It has uh, RSI at 55, Fasto at 84. So there's room on, on RSI. There's a lot of room to run. Uh, it, it's heating up, okay? So check out how the green line and the red line are, are, are pinched. If the green line crosses the red line, the upside will be a signal the bulls are taking control. It closed above the middle Bollinger Band, the dotted purple line at 48, and above the 50-day simple moving average at 51 on Friday. That was super bullish. Now it needs to stay above both levels and then break the gold line, the 100-day simple moving average at 57. If it can do that, that's going to be your signal that it wants to head higher.
higher. Um, keep an eye on this one. It's it, it's trying to heat up here. You know, the 60 resistance zone will be a big level to break. But yeah, this is the, the, this is uh, you know charts heating up. Notice it had the, the the volume spike. It is a thinly traded stock, but but if it can you know stay above that green line and get above the gold line, it, that that would be the signal that it's ready to get moving. I see a red flag here. You know, if it fails to break resistance and it pulls back, there is an unfilled gap down here. So a drop down to 40 would fill that gap. Okay, thank you very much for viewing this video. Um, yeah, we're going to be monitoring the, the, the marijuana sector stocks. We're going to see if this is going to be a sustained run or if this week was just a... a a head fake you know is this going to be the start of a marijuana sector rally or was it just a one week move we'll, we'll, we'll see this week we'll be charting the the sector in the uh, chat and so please come and check that out um yeah i recommend coming and checking the premium chat out that that's where uh, the best information's at and we have a marijuana sector chat where where i've been posting charts and, and plays there okay thanks for viewing this video